This video is supported by PCB GoGo. Hi friends, this is going to be a long video. I decided to extend the Xmoto module to support a slightly larger and therefore more powerful engine. This meant of course I have to design a new PCB in my computer. For this I use EasyEDA and it is also my first 4 layer PCB. I want to show you in this video how to design a new PCB, how to make it and how to solder the SMD parts and the first tests. With my sponsor PCBGoGo.com we were also able to record several videos of the manufacturing process and you can even see my new PCB in these videos. But I'm very proud of it and I also want to thank my contact in China. The advantage of the new PCB is that we don't have to put two PCBs together anymore. I chose the next bigger model from Pululu, the 20D Metal Gear Motor. This has a 20mm diameter and is offered with a wide variety of gear ratios from 29 to 1 to 154 to 1. In addition, the motor is even more powerful. So in our example, we use a 6 volt motor with a gear ratio of 100 to 1. This manages 5.4 kilograms on 1 centimeter, which can of course be increased with a higher gear ratio. Since we still have a silicon shortage at the moment, I had to try and find a cheaper controller chip. My choice fell on the Atini Series 8X7 or 16X7. I was worried about the performance, but I found a great article from Microchip with the following sentence. For a unidirectional quadrature signal, the instrument, Atini 1617, could successfully count incoming pulses arriving at up to approximately 2.5 MHz. This is equivalent to 75,000 RPM for an encoder with 2,000 counts per revolution. So really sufficient, as I assume 2,500 signals per encoder, so a maximum of 5 kHz. There's still a lot of room to go. So I bought an Atini 807 from Adafruit, wired it up and adapted the code and voila, it works on the breadboard. The next step was to adapt my design to the motor and try to arrange everything on a PCB. Since the dimensions are still very small, I had to resort to a four layer design. The two inner layers are the motor connections M plus and M minus. The Atini was attached to the top of the tab and the wires for power, ground, step and dir can be attached to the back. To program the Atini, a small UDPI connect on the back is enough. Also for debug messages, I put TXRX serial out. Also the control LED is mounted on the front side above the MCU. So the PCB can look a little bit out of the case and you have access to all connectors. A case design will come later. Now the PCB at PCBGoGo.com. My contact Alan was so nice and tried to film the manufacturing process of my PCB in China. This is very well done and I describe here shortly what happens after your order. First, your design will be checked. If there are no errors, we will ask for payment. As soon as we have transferred the amount, the machinery at PCBGoGo starts. First, the PCBs are cut to size. Then all holes are drilled and milled. At the bottom, you can see the milling and drilling tools, which the machine can change if necessary. After that, the holes are plated through by electroplating. After this process, the large PCBs, which contain several designs from different customers, have to be cleaned. So, a kind of PCB washing machine, so that the last chemical residues can be removed. After the washing process, a photosensitive lacquer layer is applied and the designs are exposed via laser. To protect the whole thing from stray light, the entire dust-free room is illuminated with orange light. You can see how fast the lasers work here. After a few seconds, the top side is exposed, then the plate is turned and the second layer is exposed. 
You can see my design very briefly. After the etching process, which is automatic and unfortunately cannot be filmed, the plates are again cleaned and placed on edge on a conveyor belt to dry. Here we also see my design of the Xmoto 20D board on one of the plates. In the next process, the solder mask is applied as a layer of varnish here in green. This serves as a stop layer for the solder during soldering. At the end, the PCBs are stacked and separated with a milling machine. Thus, the product is almost finished. At the end come the tests. Here we see a fly probing at work. Every signal is tested individually and this is done for every single PCB. Here it is ensured that the PCBs also have no manufacturing defects. After about a week, I received my PCBs in a small box. Here you can see a quick unpacking. The quality is very good according to my first assessment and I was really impressed that a 4 layer PCB is just 0.95mm thick. To get the PCB functional we first need a stencil. I want to make it myself. You can order the stencil at PCBgogo but I wanted to show you how I do it. For this we need a cutter which can be connected to the computer. You can find links to Amazon in the video description. First, we have to export the paste layer as SVG file from EasyEDA. We simply click on the following layers, top paste, mask layer, and board outline. Then click on export, and we get a file that we then have to convert to DXF, since my Silhouette software only understands DXF. We go to an online converter, URL in the video description. Just upload the file and the format you want. Bingo! Then open this file in the Silhouette software. Now we still have the problem that the design is displayed too large. The design is now displayed large, so adapted to the page. Now we select everything, press Ctrl A and drag the corner until the outer dimensions are correct. But we should check this again by displaying the mass of an SMD pad. This should then match the one in Easy EDA. Small pads that are next to each other, like the Atini's connections, should be combined into one pad. Now I delete the outer line and build a frame around our design, which is a bit more generous to be able to hold and fix the stencil well. So let's throw on our plotter or cutter and specify in the cut settings that we want to use foil with a Klein gun setting of about 5 and twice per cut. We also want the corners to be slightly overcut. We have the settings under PCB stencil. As foil, I take simple laser printing foil, which is unfortunately a bit too thick. Best is Miller foil with a maximum thickness of 0.1mm. This foil comes on an adhesive mat and is then clamped in the cutter. A pretty simple process. Now click send and the magic can happen. As solder paste I use Snag 3CUO.4T4 alloy. This has a melting point of 217 degrees and is wonderfully suitable for my DIY hot plate. We now use the stencil to apply the solder paste. Pay attention here to the highest cleanliness, so PCB and stencil with alcohol clean and go. The paste has a grain size of T4 and is therefore almost liquid. To place the SMD components with tweezers, you need a steady hand. Best in the morning without coffee, with a sip of water it works best. If you want, you can also use an LCD microscope. I just need to get a good pair of glasses. We'll start with the smallest and work our way to the largest components. Here you can see my DIY hot plate. This heats up the area after a profile of soda paste and melts it. The hot plate consists of an Arduino Nano, a solid relay that drives the hot plate with 220 volt. 
a MAX 6675 with thermocouple constantly measures the temperature. With the right button, you start the process and on the LCD, you can see how high the temperature is and in which phase you are. If you're interested in a video about the hot plate, just let me know in the comments. You can find the parts list in the video description. After the PCB cools down, the first thing I do is test to see if there is a short between power and negative, including the motor contacts. Next, I program the tiny with my firmware. If the LED flashes, the process has worked. You can find the source code and additional information in the video description. The next videos will be about applications for these motors. I hope you look forward. And of course, if you leave a thumbs up or a subscription, I would be very happy. And you can support me to publish even better videos on the channel. You're Frank.